Hi, I'm Dr. Daryl Gray. I'm a gastroenterologist and the Director of Community Engagement and Equity and Digestive Health at the Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. I'm currently at the University Hospital East Campus in the endoscopy suite and about to perform a screening colonoscopy. Colonoscopy is one of several measures or tests that can be used for screening for colorectal cancer. It is the best test for examining the entire colon and both identifying and removing precancerous lesions. Notably for this exam, we use what's called a colonoscope. A colonoscope is a flexible instrument in which we can use knobs to turn both left and right, up and down, in order to examine the entire colon. This device also has a camera and a light on the tip of it that allows us to more thoroughly examine the colon and also to take pictures. Now, albeit your colon is approximately 160 centimeters or 60 inches or five feet, depending on which measurement you use, but the, we do not need to use five feet of scope in order to examine the colon because your colon is very compact inside of your abdomen. Now, before we begin this procedure, we ensure that the patient is very comfortable. In this case, our patient is under what we call conscious sedation. She's resting comfortably, but able to breathe on her own. And we'll begin the exam. We're entering through the rectum. And as we move beyond the rectum into the sigmoid colon, our goal is to gradually reach the end of the colon, which is the ascending colon, and specifically the cecum. You'll notice as we move along that the colon is characterized by nice pink mucosa. And if you look very closely, you can see veins along the mucosa. Now the colon is not straight. In fact, there are a lot of twists and turns that you'll see as we move along this colon exam. Now this patient did a great job at preparing for the exam by taking a bowel prep. You'll notice that there is very clear liquid inside the colon instead of brown and solid stool. We are currently in the ascending colon and about to enter the cecum. And you'll notice you've reached the cecum by looking at the landmarks. What we're looking at there is called the appendiceal orifice. On the other side of this orifice is your appendix. To the left, you will notice the ileocecal valve. This is a valve that can be traversed to reach the small intestine called the terminal ileum that we are currently entering now. We are now in the small intestine. You will notice a difference in the mucosa of the small intestine. As you see there, uh, it's finger-like projections called villi that, that line the small intestine. And we could go further in the small intestine, but for the purpose of this exam, our focus is the colon. And so we're now back into the cecum. And during this part of the examination, this part is called the inspection. And so we slowly withdraw, being careful to examine the colonic mucosa in a clockwise fashion. It doesn't necessarily have to be clockwise, but as long as we're seeing a 360 degree view of the colonic wall. We use water to wash away any stool or sediment, and we can use suctioning by which to withdraw that liquid. We inspect carefully to look for polyps. Polyps are ingrowths of tissue that can occur within the colon, and they can also be precancerous. If found, they would be removed at the time of the colonoscopy. So we are moving from the ascending colon, 
Now moving backward into the transverse colon. Again, still using that same pattern of a clockwise movement to examine a 360 degree view of the colon. We are now about to round another corner and moving, transitioning from the transverse colon into the descending colon. Again, being very careful to remove any liquid and sediment that we find along the way that could potentially hide any polyps. We have just transitioned from the descending colon into the sigmoid colon. And from the sigmoid colon, we move back to our starting point, which is the rectum. At this point, the last part of the examination, we do what's called a retroflexion, in which we turn the camera back on itself to look at the anal verge and look for anything like polyps that could have been missed on the way in, or hemorrhoids. In this case, our patient has some small hemorrhoids, as you can see there. But the good news for this patient today is that no polyps were found. Now let's look at a different patient. What you'll notice in this patient, as opposed to the last patient we saw, is that on withdrawal we're encountering polyps. And so we're using different techniques by which to remove polyps. What you're seeing here is we're using a snare. Snare is a device that is like a wire or a lasso, if you will in which we can put a loop around, wire this snare around a polyp and remove it, either using it cold or removing the polyp cold or using heat or cautery by which to remove the polyp. As a reminder, polyps are engrossed of tissue that potentially could lead to cancer. So if we find them in the colon, our goal is to remove them and remove them completely. Now you'll notice two very large polyps here, one at 12 o'clock and the other at about 6 o'clock. Before removing this large polyp, we chose to inject epinephrine to ensure that we minimize bleeding from removal of this large polyp.
Then, similar to the smaller polyps, we snared the polyp, but in this case we chose to actually choke the polyp for a while until we saw a color change and were confident that indeed we choked off the blood supply to this polyp before removing it. Now this polyp was too large to be suctioned into the suction uh, portion of the device, and so we actually had to remove that entire polyp uh, from the colon, suctioning it into the device and then removing the colonoscope. Here you'll notice a very large colonic mass. And this is something that could not be removed endoscopically, and so we chose to use what's called a forceps device by which we can take biopsies. And we're slowly removing the colonoscope until we reach again the starting point of the rectum in which we'll do the retroflexin and conclude our exam. Mm-hmm.